What if I told you that bananas have so much more wisdom and understanding about programming than we do, that it's shocking they haven't yet taken over Silicon Valley? You would say that is the laziest clickbait I've ever seen, but I'll prove you wrong, and by the end of this video, you will never think about bananas in the same way. So why is it that a delicious healthy fruit with a funny shape that doesn't do much other than being eaten by chimps is a better programmer than you? Let me explain. Here is a program for a simple game that practically every programmer made when they started coding. The guessing game, where a player has to guess a number between 1 and 100. We generate a random number, declare that the player hasn't guessed it correctly yet, and create a loop where the player can guess away. Here we take an input, check if the guess is correct. If it is, we update the variable to break the loop, and if it is too high or too low, we print an appropriate message. All well and great, right? Wrong. 99% of newbies write something very similar to this, but if this code were a banana, it would be small, rotten, taste bitter, and probably be infected with a disease. Nobody wants that. So how do we make sure that our code isn't like that? Well, let's learn from the mighty banana and see how we can improve it. First of all, let's address the issue of rotting. A banana knows that without its skin, it will be swarmed by bugs and rot away long before it is ripe. So to make sure that our code is safely protected from the rest of the program, wrap it in a function so it has a nice, protective outer layer to it. It may not be a huge issue on a small case like this, but when working on a more complex bit of code or larger project, the program quickly becomes difficult to untangle. But it is also important not to go too far the other direction. Separating out every second line of code into a function will introduce confusion rather than removing it. A banana also knows that wasting energy and not being fully optimized will mean it won't grow big and will be outcompeted by other better bananas. Unnecessary variables are not optimal and we should always aim to save memory space and keep our code clear by only declaring variables that are essential. In this case, we can easily remove the guest variable and use the best kind of while loop instead, a while true loop. It's true that there certainly is place for while loops with embedded exit conditions. It is often better to use a while true loop and add break statements within the loop itself. This way, we won't have to test for the same condition twice, and we can include multiple exit conditions without producing an overly complicated mess on the top. Adding a simple break wherever our exit condition is met will be more efficient and lead to a happier banana. And while we're removing unnecessary bits of code, this check is completely useless, as the first two already rule out all other possibilities. And finally, the banana also knows that without a defense mechanism against disease and parasites, it will be infected by harmful external forces and die. The same way our programs are bound to be infected by the idiocracy of its users, who won't know the difference between typing letters and numbers when providing an input, and will crash our program. We always have to account for erroneous user input and deal with it in our program. If the user can break your code, then you wrote bad code. So, let's add a try and accept to make sure that the player won't infect our banana. This will ensure that for as long as the user provides an input that would break the code, they will be forced to try again before continuing. If you know of another programming technique that we can learn from bananas, make sure to leave them in the comment section so I can include them next time. Now watch the video on the left to learn how to drastically improve the quality of your code by implementing one simple concept.